I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And if you're still flying an F1 board like the good old Naze 32, you're not going to like it. I would guess it was over a year ago when I first thought that the F1 chip, that's the microprocessor that's on the flight controller, that the F1 chip had seen the end of its run, it was going to be retired, and the F3 chip was going to take over for it. Clean Flight was just maxing out the processor utilization on the board, and, and we couldn't go any faster. And then Boris and his team of coding monkeys did something amazing and magical. They went through Clean Flight or Beta Flight, and they tuned it up. They found all these ways to make it more efficient, and the F1 chip got a new lease on life. In fact, I kind of wonder if the vendors who build these boards or were a little bit mad at Boris because the F1 was just done. It was on the way out. F3s were coming and everybody was going to have to buy new flight controllers. And then suddenly Boris went, nah, no, nah, that's not. Let's just, uh, just uh, you know, throw this bit out here and clean this bit up here. And F1 chips were viable again. And they remained viable for, oh, I would say somewhere very relatively recently. Betaflight mm, 29 or 30. Up until almost, yeah, they, they really just, you could still do everything you needed to do on an F1. But that is coming to an end. Uh, F1 chips are not fast enough to do the kind of things that we're asking the processor to do. Uh, and, and so you might say, well, I'll just run a, a slower PID loop rate, right? KISS runs just fine at one kilohertz. A great flight performance. And many people today are running Betaflight, uh, even Betaflight, you know, 317, the latest version at like a 1.6 or a 1 kilohertz PID loop rate and their F1 board, their processor utilization is fine. They like the way their copter flies. They love their good old nays or their, even their CC3D. Oh, you, you naughty CC3D users with your bootloader. And everybody's happy, but there's more to it than that. The, the F1 is running out of memory. Um, by, way that, by that, I mean program memory. So these chips don't have a hard drive, right? They have flash memory, and that's where you store the program. I don't mean flash memory like the black box, like you have a data flash chip where you store the black box data. That's different. I mean the actual place where the program, the beta flight or clean flight code is stored. They're running out. And as a result, they've had to do some pairing out of features on the F1s, like the F1 chips running beta flight. They don't have some feature. I don't know what feature. I think they cut out GPS. Does Betaflight really even do GPS? Oh, anyway, anyway, they're running out of memory and it's just too much for the Betaflight developers. And that means that they are gonna end support for the F1s. Maybe I should have said that earlier in the video. Hey, uh, Betaflight and CleanFlight are ending support for the F1 chips, F1 boards, NAS32, CC3D, whatever else you got. If it has an F1, its days are officially numbered. They've been unofficially numbered for a while. We, this has kind of been coming, and we've just kept freaking resuscitating this zombie, and it's kept working, and why the heck would you throw it out? But it's too much now. There's not enough program memory to do the things they're wanting to do, and it's just too slow even. It, it's, just, it, it's done. I asked the Betaflight developers uh, over on the Betaflight Slack, that's where I asked them, and I said, can you give me a date? Have you, have you got a date that I can announce? And they said, not really. It all depends on how annoying the F1 boards continue to be to support. If they are not too annoying to support, they'll kind of keep supporting them. But the minute they get too annoying, they're gone. That's official. I didn't make that up. That's not a, that's not a, a, a supposition or a maybe someday. That's official. It's on the chopping block. It's just a question of how long it's going to take for the ax to fall. So... If you are building a copter today, do not put an F1 board in it. Frankly, up until now, I would have said, eh, if you got one on the shelf and you want to use it, go for it. Copter will still fly fine. Nope. Today, I don't think an F1 is viable because in the next, no one knows, six months? Uh, no one knows. But in the next not too long as things go, less than one copter's lifespan, you'll no longer be able to run the latest release of Betaflight and CleanFlight on that, on that board. So there you go. It's official. Don't buy F1s. 
and don't build copters with F1s in them. And if you have a copter that you love with an F1 board in it, start thinking now about what you're going to buy to replace it. So then the question that I know you guys are going to ask is, well, what flight controller should I buy? And uh, to keep things short and sweet, I've been putting the Betaflight F3 into every build I can. I think it's a great board. It fits what I want out of a board. I like it a lot. It is an F3 and not an F4, but for the foreseeable future, that's not holding us back. Uh, if you want an F4, I would point you to the Holybro Kakute F4. And there's an all-in-one version with built-in PDB, the F4 AIO. And I point them to you because I wrote the manual for those. So if you uh, take a look at the manual, I think the F4 manual isn't quite out yet. The, F, uh, the AIO manual is up on their website, though. If you check that out and the voice sounds familiar, it's me. Uh, uh, so there you go. Um, Rotor Geeks SSD and the Luminaire Lux uh, V2 are great boards if you don't want an OSD. Uh, both of them are good for different reasons. In the past, I've recommended the Omnibus F4 Pro. Uh, I do not recommend that one anymore because there have been some quirks with it. People having problems and bugs and without going into too much detail, I don't recommend the Omnibus F4 Pro anymore. Um, so there you go. Uh, another one that I think is worth a look is the... This is the Flying Lemon Kiwi V2. Uh, I had some complaints about the Flying Lemon Kiwi in my all-in-one flight controller roundup, and they sent me this one and said, hey, we fixed the things you complained about. I'm going to be doing a separate video about why I think this is a good board, but uh, you could have a look at it. And uh, yeah, there you go. Those are some good ones. Thanks for watching, and happy flying.